say they're doing it again. January 6th was a hoax? Really? It may have seemed surreal, but it was very real. This is what you are up against. Can Democrats afford to be fighting with each other when that is what they're against? Let's bring in a player who can take us behind the scenes of what's going on. Today was a big day. They just finished having a big meeting among Democrats. The man on your screen, one of the progressive Democrats willing to bend a bit to help Biden get this infrastructure bill through. His name is Ro Khanna, deputy whip of the Congressional Progressive Caucus. Good to have you back on primetime, sir. Chris, always great to be on. So I heard from Representative Jayapal uh, that there was progress made. You guys are close. What's the reality? We are close. We all want to get behind President Biden's agenda. Let's be clear. There are 210 House Democrats who want to do that. There are 48 senators who want to do that. There are very few holdouts. What we've said is we just need a public agreement about the reconciliation spend uh, and some of the framework, and we're ready to vote for the bill. So let's just get everyone in a room, get that uh, agreement done, and then we pass uh, the president's agenda. Do you guys understand what you're playing with here? I get that Democrats are not Republicans. I get that you guys don't do lockstep the way they do most of the time. But your mandate was, you know, you guys right now are saying the mandate was the spending bill. Yes, and infrastructure, but really the spending bill? No. The top item on your mandate, Roe, and I know you know this, was no more trumpery, no more toxic politics, no more opposition as a position. Get things done. Are you guys worried that even what's happening right now may weaken your hand going into the midterms? Chris, yes, we're worried. I mean, I read Robert Kagan's chilling piece about the rise of Trump in 2024. Anyone who dismisses that is foolish. And we have to govern. We have to deliver. The consequences of us failing are very severe, not just for our party, not just for this president, but for democracy itself. And a number of members at the caucus made that point that more than anything, we have to get this done because democracy itself is at stake. I believe that. Progressives believe that. Moderates believe that, and that's why ultimately I think we're going to rally around Joe Biden. He's the president. We need to fall in line, get behind him, and he can come uh, to an agreement between the factions. We're saying we're willing to negotiate. Uh, I guess I don't know what more progressives can do, uh, but say we want what the president wants and, and get his agenda through, and we're willing to be reasonable. What if the president says, vote yes on Thursday on the infrastructure bill, Row. Let's get that done and take on faith that I will get the reconciliation bill in the best way that I can. Would you vote yes on Thursday? The president's not going to say that. I've been in touch with uh, not the president directly. Why do you have to defeat my hypothetical like that, Ro? I spent all this time coming up with it, and you just (laughs) shoot it away. You know, you always ask. You you ask better hypotheticals than almost anyone. Will you vote yes on just the infrastructure bill? I won't, and here's why. I would vote yes on an infrastructure bill that the progressives were part of negotiating and that had the president's climate priorities. But what happened here is you have an infrastructure bill that says we're actually not going to have electric buses. We're actually not going to have electric vehicles vehicle infrastructure. We're not going to have a clean energy standard. We're not going to even take any advice or any perspective from progressives. And now you want us to just vote for that? That was never the agreement. If you wanted to do an infrastructure bill and you had progressives there and you wanted to have clean uh, energy standards, sure, I could vote for a separate infrastructure bill. But the understanding in the beginning was we're going to do this because we need the Romney vote. We need the Portman vote. Just put up with it. It's and you not didn't perfect. get them anyway. Now, what we got with some of them, but, but put up with this bipartisan thing, but we'll give you reconciliation. Now, what we're saying is we're open to negotiating on reconciliation, but how can you in the 21st century pass an infrastructure bill that doesn't deal, deal with climate? That's certainly not what any Democrat ran on. And uh, absolutely. And in the polls, it's not where people place their priorities on your side of the aisle when it came to what they wanted to see. However, how much credit do you give the argument that something is better than nothing? I give it a lot of credit. And the reason I give it a lot of credit is, Chris, you know, I was a co-chair for Bernie Sanders. 
We don't have Medicare for all. I get uh, criticized by my base. We don't have free public college in this bill. We don't have a $15 minimum wage in this bill. We don't have a lot of things that Bernie Sanders, that Elizabeth Warren, that progressives believe. We started out at $6 trillion. We've already compromised to $3.5 trillion. We're willing to compromise more. We said let's pass this bill in the Senate before bringing it to the House. We're willing not to even compromise on that and said let's just get a public agreement. They haven't even given us a number, Chris. The president basically begged them. They said put up a number. How can you negotiate when the other side isn't even willing to tell you what their proposal is? So I feel in this case the progressives have been exceedingly reasonable. We want to get something done, and we just need to get behind President Biden's vision here. The McConnell move on the debt ceiling, not a surprise. The hypocrisy even week over week, not a surprise. But what does that tell you? about just how high the stakes are, how willing the Republicans are to do everything they can to have you guys fail. And what does that mean in terms of how much you guys have to come together on your side of the ball? They're waiting to kill you on the other side. Chris, I always knew that they wanted us to fail. What is shocking is that they want this country to fail. You expose the hypocrisy. And the biggest hypocritical line in McConnell's speech is, this is what we need to do to compete against China? Give me a break. The single biggest thing we could do that would give China a leg up is to default on our debt. It would basically be handing China the competitive advantage of the 21st century. And any Republican who cares an iota of us leading should be voting to increase the debt ceiling. But we're going to be responsible. Democrats are always responsible. We'll vote on a party line basis to, to raise the debt ceiling. But let me tell you, the American people are smart. They played these shenanigans in the Clinton years. The American people saw through it. They'll see through it this time as well. And I think they will reward Democrats at the polls for doing the responsible thing. Do you think uh, that there is a vote this week at all on the Democrat side? I'm hopeful. I, I think we're closer uh, than people realize. I think we can get an agreement. Uh, the president, I think, has done an extraordinary job, along with uh, Ron Klain and Steve Ricchetti. They're reaching out. And they've convinced 99% of us. They just need to convince the other couple of folks. Let me tell you this. Democrats around the country are outraged that a few people are blocking the aspirations, not just of those in Congress and the Senate, but of Democrats around the country. We nominated Joe Biden. We elected Joe Biden. He's sort of the median point of the Democratic Party. He's been a lifelong moderate. Is it too hard to get behind him? I mean, that's politics. He's the leader, not me, not every other member of Congress. Let's get behind our Democratic president. Well, I appreciate that. It's a perfect segue uh, to the segment I'm going to do after the break, which is showing where the people are and what they wanted from the Democrats. Congressman Rokana, thank you very much. Good luck doing the people's business. Thank you, Chris. 